So I'm Oliver Camado, principal of the International Macrobiotics School. I've been teaching macrobiotics for 40 or more years since I started learning it back in the 1980s. And although macrobiotics is well, well known for um, its um, dietary principles and its, its understanding of food and health, uh, actually a deeper side of macrobiotic teaching has always been uh, what is, you know, what are we here for? What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of our life? Um, I was very lucky to study with Michio Kushi uh, quite a lot in the 1980s and 90s, and he had a very deep perception of life and the spirit world, and um, uh, uh, which really sparked my whole interest in this area. Um, interesting, this is, a, this is a subject, this is a question which I don't think will ever be answered scientifically. Um, we can only answer it from a, from a much wider spiritual point of view. Uh, on my journey, um, some 30, 30 something years ago, I went through some, uh, some tough experiences of Kundalini energy. This is a powerful energy that comes up from the base chakra, comes up through the body, through the central channel, opening up various, various um, chakras, which all sounds very good, but actually was uh, extremely challenging. Um, led me to experience uh, that space, which maybe some of you have experienced, of not being my body, not being my emotions, not being my thoughts and my thinking mind, but being something beyond that. Um, when all of those are quiet, uh, you start realizing there's another much bigger part of ourselves. You might say our soul, which is very much connected to spirit. And some of the effects of that, of this experience of going through it, which took years to kind of experience and integrate, um, um, being able to uh, have just a very quiet mind. If I'm not feeling emotional about something, I mean, you know, I have some strong like, emotional thing going on, then I can, um, I, it's quite easy for me to just have an empty mind and uh, feel very peaceful. And that's a good state for perceiving the spiritual world more, which is more subtle, it's more difficult to feel. It's often in quiet moments and maybe in nature or in other places, meditation, that we get stronger perceptions of what's happening in the spirit world. And that's happened for me uh, a lot. And I had a lot of um, perceptions, experiences in the spirit world. It's full of spirits, mostly good, mostly with good intentions. And I chat to them and have a lot of conversations. And um, um, also quite frequently help people who have just passed on. Sometimes they need some help on continuing on that journey. Sometimes it's a difficult, it's a, uh, it's difficult for them to get loose of this earthly life and really pass on to the spiritual world. So they can need some help. They can be helped from the other side, but um, sometimes it's helpful to get some help from this side. So um, uh, yeah, lots of kind of conversations and work in that area. So uh, uh, my, my perception, this is my perception, it's not the truth, this is just my truth, this is what I perceived. If it resonates with you, then great, let it in. If it doesn't resonate with you, then that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, um, what I feel coming from the spiritual world is a great deal of urgency. Um, the great thing is when we all are on that side, uh, and we're not uh, enmeshed in this worldly life and all the kind of practical, emotional kind of entanglements we get into and desires, um, it's easier for us to have a clearer view of things, of ourselves, of life, um, um, purpose of life. And then we come down here onto this earthly plane and, <laughs> and things get more difficult, uh, usually. And the feeling, the very strong feeling I get from above is um, at this time of really fast change in planetary uh, happenings and also consciousness, uh, a, a big need for fast evolution. Um, even not at this particular time, but in general, uh, what, is, what is the meaning of life or what is the purpose of life? It is to evolve, develop. Um, uh, this is not only biologically on the planet through evolution, 
but is also very much on a spiritual level as well. We're here to evolve, uh, to develop, uh, to grow emotionally, uh, spiritually in our consciousness. Um, and boy, there's some real big messes on the planet right now and uh, coming from delusion and small-mindedness and uh, very self-centered ways of thinking. Uh, and um, we're trying to grow up. We're trying to get beyond this. We're trying to learn how to grow in peace with each other and to respect um, all people and all life on the planet and take care of the planet and all the people on the planet. And there are these, um, you might say, sick ways of uh, treating other people, wanting to dominate other people, possess other people, possess land, you know, etc., and uh, uh, causing immense pain and harm on the planet. So we are collectively trying to learn how to grow up and become adults and uh, respect everything around us. Um, and so there's a, a collective learning going on um, and we, there is progress happening. If you look at the, the kind of more modern developed world, last 40 years awareness around um, uh, the environmentalism, the planet, how we need to look after the planet, how we need to look after our own health physically through the enormous growth in complementary medicine and Western medicine is beginning to beginning to get on board with that as well. Um, um, so there, there is there is an evolution happening on a social level, which we're all a part of, and we all need to be pushing forwards, part of the wave, part of the wave that's going forwards, not part of the weight that is trying to drag everything back and stop things changing, usually for personal gain rather than the collective good. Um, one of the learnings going on is around uh, working more collectively um, because um, that's the way things are in the spirit world. Uh, spirits in the spirit world, people work together in groups and committees and uh, um, because that's how we do our best work. That's, that's how we have the best effect. That's how we gain the most wisdom. That's one of the things we're learning on the planet. And also we all have our own personal journey. We've all been on a very, very, very uh, long journey through many lifetimes, many experiences. Um, lifetime on the planet, in the spirit world, on the planet, in the spirit world, on the planet, in the spirit world. Uh, this is the, you know, the wave, the cycle that we keep going through. So here we are also individually in our individual lifetimes having a, a very long past. And from that past, we bring um, a lot of understanding, wisdom, skills. This is why some of us are very good at uh, farming and growing or engineering or caring or parenting or sewing or making clothing, or artistic, scientific uh, endeavors. You know, we all have very different skills. This is partly because we've practiced these skills over and over in past lives, may come into this life and, oh yeah, maybe I'd like to do this. Maybe I'd like to get into healing. Maybe I'd like to get into, you know, maybe I want to get into caring or engineering or whatever it is. This is because it's familiar. We've already developed these skills. Um, and also, uh, unfortunately, we bring a lot of um, held um, uh, beliefs and emotions and uh, maybe more physical pains from the past as well uh, what you might call some people call our karma uh, and this is what we're in this lifetime to work through to let go of some of these old emotional patterns our fears our negative thoughts about life our, uh, about ourselves our maybe lack of self-worth um, um, old fears angers resentments anything which separates us from other people and isolates us on an emotional and spiritual level. Isolation is pain, connection and togetherness uh, brings, uh, brings joy uh, and love and peace and, and happiness. So we are, we are all on our individual journeys as well of learning. And in order to learn, 
the great thing about coming into a lifetime on the planet is that we can have uh, strong experiences um, because experiences are, are necessary to learn. There's certain things we can listen to someone and or read something or hear something or see something and we can learn from it. But we learn faster when we are having experiences, when we are trying to have relationships with our children, partners, other people, uh, trying to you know, make things, you know, um, um, grow things, um, uh, you know, eat, cook, um, etc. You know, um, through our experiences on the planet, we're given these amazing opportunities to learn. Um, the trouble is. <laughs> with these experiences um we get into trouble um we face a lot of challenges and difficulties um, this is the nature of life buddha said life is suffering um and it may feel to you that you are presented with a series of challenges and difficulties in life uh, one of the teachings i most like about macrobiotics from georgia sour and through michio kushi and others is to welcome uh, difficulties in life because Every difficulty, including physical illnesses, uh, emotional problems, relation, relational problems with other people, every single one is an opportunity to learn something. This is one of my learnings in this lifetime so far. Every difficulty I know, every difficulty I have is an opportunity for, for me to learn something. This is a profoundly changing way of looking at life so many people are in a more victim in place oh this is happening to me this is happening to me people are doing this to me oh if only this wasn't true i need more of this it's like people are feeling like a victim of circumstances okay things happen to us from outside that's true uh, i'm not saying that they don't but how we respond to these outside situations really depends a lot on us and um, through my experience in the uh, last 40 something years, I can really say for myself that every difficulty is uh, has, it's like a cloud with a silver lining. There's always something to learn. So a willingness to learn when we are really struggling and having difficulties in life um, um, is a great way of increasing our learning. Also good, you know, you know that there's, you know, there's, um, you know, we're presented with these kind of um, interesting challenges, um, opportunities you know, through our lives. Um, but also it's good to get more understanding, I think, of some of the kind of more long-term, deeper purposes that we have in this lifetime. Um, how do we do that? In Oriental medicine, they, they say our Shen, our consciousness, you might say our soul, is located um, not in our heads, which we're very keen, which we think is very important in Western culture, but in our hearts. And if you really want to get on track in your life and find and really get much more in touch with what this life is about for you, what you need to be doing, the answer is to get into your heart and to some extent also your guts, because we also have gut feelings. Gut feelings are like instant, strong, do this, don't do that, go here, be with this person, don't be with these people. Uh, gut feelings are so useful. Um, um, and so are heart feelings. So let's spend a couple of minutes being able, we can all get guidance from our heart. Sometimes we may be thinking, what do I do about this difficulty? What am I gonna, how am I gonna solve this problem with this person? How do I get out of this, this difficult situation? What is this illness about? Um, and maybe we look for answers outside of ourselves, but very often the answers are inside of us in our own hearts. And the more we can tune into our heart and gut feelings, um, the easier life becomes, becomes more of a flow. Ah, oh, need to do this. Ah, oh, need to do this. Need to see this person. Go here, do this. Take a rest. Be in the sun. Um, um, we get this internal guidance. Um, so... Uh, I'm sure I've done this on other videos, but let's let's do it again just briefly. So you may get be able to get in touch easily with your heart feelings um, and heart guidance, or you may not be familiar with this. Uh, we're going to do this fairly quickly. 
If this is a difficult process for you, then I really recommend you keep repeating it for yourself and really get better at it. Um, we get better at things by practicing. So put a hand on your heart, either shut your eyes or half shut your eyes. And take some long, deep breaths into your heart. Feel your heart in, uh, under your hands and in your chest. Long deep breath in, and then just relax on the end breath. Long deep breath in. Relax on the out breath. Long deep breath in. Taking this energy breath into your heart so it becomes more active. Relax to breathe out. Long breath in. Relax. Long breath in. And out. Long breath in. And out. Long breath in. Feel the energy coming into your heart. Let your awareness drop it down from your head into your heart. And so your sense of keep breathing in this way, so your sense of your heart in your chest gets stronger. Feel your heart in your chest, under your head. And now let's ask our hearts a question. And listen for the answer coming from your heart, probably very simple. Don't go into your head, don't start thinking, just listen. It's almost like a feeling that comes from the heart with a message. A few more breaths into your heart. Ask your heart. What is the most important thing that I want to achieve over the next three months. What is the most important thing I really want to achieve in the next three months? Listen for the answer. Sometimes it's the answer comes instantaneously, quickly. Sometimes you have to wait and keep breathing into your heart for a little bit for the answer to come. And if your heart has given you a message, make a mental note of it so you remember it. And we're going to ask one more question. In achieving this aim for the next three months, what is the first step or the first thing you need to do to achieve this aim? And make a mental note of the answer. We could go on and ask many more questions, but we're going to leave it there. So gradually open your eyes. Remember those two answers. 
and hopefully you got answers. If you didn't, then spend longer doing this, longer breathing into your heart, getting energy here, getting a sense of your heart, and then try asking yourself these simple questions or any question that you want. We can ask the heart any question we want. And usually it has some good answers. Sometimes it has weight. Um, uh, this, this takes time or something like that, but usually we get answers. So this is a great way you can do, you know, if you want to practice it, do this every morning before you get out of bed. Spend five minutes doing this every morning before you get out of bed. Um, you might want to have a pen and paper and write down the answers. And if you do it every day, you'll start finding their themes and you'll start really grasping what some of the major things that you're wanting to achieve. Not any external things, but also internal things. I want to let go of my grief. I want to let go of what happened in my last relationship. I want to let go of what happened with my with a parent or someone else. Uh, I want to move on from this 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 job. I want you know it's you know, I want to find a different kind of work that I'm going to do in the world. Um, I want to have a child. You know, it could be all kinds of kind of more internal feelings. It's not just external things. So this is how we get in touch more with our life purpose, which I feel is probably about the most important thing for us to do in this life. And there's so many distractions in the modern world, so many noises, sounds, entertainments, uh, actions, you know, busyness going on which actually can make it more difficult to tune into ourselves. We need kind of more quiet times to tune in. Um, if you have a, a really firm feeling for what this lifetime is about for you, what you're trying to find, um, fantastic. If you don't, I really encourage you to spend time with yourself. Maybe you need to spend some hours or days on your own as well to really be able to go in and feel this. Um, it is great to feel that one's getting on track in life and uh, really getting somewhere and fulfilling your unique purpose. No one can tell you what your, the purpose is in your life, only it's up to you to feel it from the inside. And this is not a selfish thing to do. This is what we should all be doing in order to make the best use of our life. And actually, the more we get in touch with our life purpose, the more we have to give to other people, the more we have to contribute to the world. So this is um, ironically, paradoxically, the least selfish thing that you can do. The most selfish thing you can do is stay in your fixed, um, uh, detached, isolated way of living um, and not getting in touch with a, a bigger reality, uh, your own spirit and your spiritual purpose. Um, so I hope this has been useful. Um, uh, a deeper teaching of macrobiotics, and I feel a really essential uh, part of life and something that we teach on many of our courses. Our first year holistic uh, nutrition and cooking course, this forms a part of that. The looking up five day looking after your health course, uh, the, the um, online six steps course. And this is a, this deeper understanding is a part of all these courses. So uh, if you'd like to uh, some further guidance on this, please uh, look at our courses and think about joining one of these. Thank you for listening and I wish you well.